So hello everyone, my name is Patrick, I'm the founder of NMaker and today I want to talk a little bit about verification methods for NFTs. This is a very interesting topic, also a very important topic, but it's kind of overlooked a little bit in our space and I think it's uh, important that we shine a little bit of light on it and you know, NMaker recently released some, some tools for that, so um, I want to tackle the problem from the beginning, explain to you why it matters and then how we can solve it. So let's get let's get started um, by taking a look at a practical example. You know, how do we as collectors actually verify that an NFT collection is legit? How do we know that this NFT collection here, for example, is really issued by Paris Hilton? How do we know? Okay, you know, this isn't just some some random collection made by someone who pretends to be Paris Hilton. You know, we go to a Twitter account, this one. And we probably trust her Twitter account, right? She has uh, 16 million followers and she's also linking the website parishilton.com in there. So we can assume, okay, this might be a legit collection. This is this is not some scam or anything. And we, we do know that because we trust these accounts. So if I go to nft.parishilton.com, you know, I can be sure either someone has stolen the domain or something like that or, or and stolen the Twitter account and that is very unlikely. So I can I can probably trust this collection. But to take this to take this a step further, how do we actually know, you know, five months later, five months after this collection has sold? How do we know or maybe a year or two years after this collection has initially minted? Um, that this is legit. I can't, you know, go to a Twitter account and scroll back all the time. No one does that. That takes way too long um, to actually verify for me as a user, right? So what we do is we trust other people to verify those collections for us. So for example, on our favorite uh, Cardano marketplace, what we do is we go to, to JPEG store and we take a look at all these collections here. For example, let's let's look at the space buds. We see, okay, the space buds, we see, okay, here, there's this little check, check mark. This policy ID has been verified to correspond to this project. And then we trust JPEG store basically to, to authenticate this collection. And the way JPEG store does this is they have a form and they have certain requirements for collections to, to um, actually get verified, right? So they have this nice collection verification page here where you can read through and take a look and say, okay, if your collection was minted for another service outside of JPEG store, please send a DM blah, 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 um, you have to post the name of your collection, the policy ID, the stake key, and so on. And you have to uh, DM them through your project's official Twitter account. So basically what would happen in Paris Hilton's case would be Paris Hilton would have to send a DM to JPEG store, then JPEG store knows, okay, we can probably trust this Twitter account, so we're gonna verify this collection. So essentially they build up a very big, large database of different collections that they have verified manually step by step, right? And the same goes not only for JPEG store, the same goes for, for Magic Eden, the largest Solana marketplace. Here we also see this little badge. We can also read through here what are the three ways to get badged uh, by applying upon hurdling a volume threshold. So you have to have a certain amount of volume on, on the collection to get this, this badge. Then you have to apply and support and, and provide docs or you can launch through their own marketplace launchpad, right? So basically the same way as, as for, um, you know, JPEG store. And even on the biggest marketplace here, OpenSea, it's, the, it's basically the exact same thing here. They also have a little check mark. This collection belongs to a verified account and has significant interest and so on. And, and there, if we take a look at the documentation, they say, okay, um, before you can apply for ver account verification, your account must have this and that, like also volume, username, profile picture, etc. So basically the same process as for, for JPEG store or Magic Eden. And you know, this, this is all fine and good. It's very good user experience because we as users, we can just go to these to these websites like, like JPEG store and we can trust those and we think, okay, they, they do their due diligence, they, they do the research for us. And we can trust JPEG store and because we trust JPEG store, we can be sure, okay, this collection might be legit. But uh, to be honest, that is not a very decentralized way. That's a very centralized way. Basically all these different marketplaces, they're all building their own big databases of verified collections in order to make li the life for their, for their users easier, which is good from a user experience standpoint. We need that, right? 
but it's also not very crypto. It's not very web free because we are essentially giving trust away. We're giving trust to these platforms instead of keeping it for ourselves. And the smallest amount of people are actually doing the research themselves, right? Um, I, I don't know anyone who, who would click on here and then actually go and take a look at the policy ID here and then you know go to the website of the Ape Society and then check what is the policy ID and so on. People don't really do that. They just trust JPEG store. And that's fine. But it becomes increasingly more difficult once we have multiple marketplaces. Because if there are other marketplaces, like on Ethereum, we have like hundreds of marketplaces, right? Then we have all these marketplaces and they all have um, either a shared database or they all build their own database of, of verified collections. And then it becomes very difficult for new marketplaces to emerge because they have to build this database from the beginning, basically, or they have to use an API provider who already already verified all these collections, like, for example, in Cardano, that could be Scene of T Jungle or something like that. And, and then, you know, we can verify, uh, they, they can verify these collections, but we're essentially centralizing it more and more because we only have like this one big database, which is filled by, by humans, right, who verify that manually step by step and we have this one point of failure. And that's very, very bad, in my opinion, at least. And we should, should be looking more for, for an additional way to actually make it easier for everyone, every collector out there, to verify the collections themselves. So basically, um, I thought long and hard about how, how we can do that. And uh, then I met a, a nice company in the Cardano space, which is doing uh, digital identities. This company is called IMX. This is their website, I'm x.id, and they basically focus on creating digital identity products. So they, they have the same philosophy. They say, okay, everyone should be owning their identity. Creators should be able to, you know, verify their own projects essentially. And, and just, you should be giving power to the people instead of just centralizing it back into a web two kind of way. And I like that approach a lot. I, that's actually one of the things that, that has drawn me to the whole space. So when I got started with Cardano, you know, one of the big things attracting me was Atala Prism, uh, which is basically IOG's variant of, of IMX. Atala Prism is basically also, also doing digital identities on the Cardano blockchain, and they're trying to you know, take the whole identity topic and really go big with it and really try to, you know, connect all your, what you call it, passports and stuff to your wallet, which I think is amazing and, and really the future. And I, I think that Cardano is in a unique position to actually go into that direction and be like a standout blockchain that is innovating in this digital identity space. But um, let's get back to the more, more concrete stuff, right? So how would we use digital identities to actually verify NFT collections? The idea is quite simple, right? You have a digital identity where, where an artist like Paris Hilton, for example, could verify herself in a decentralized way. And then you connect that di digital identity directly to the collection on chain. So you have the digital identity, you have the collection on chain, and then you connect the two, and then people can take a look at that and verify it themselves. Um, to make this a little bit more practical, I, I sat down together with uh, IMX and also Atala Prism, Tony Rose there, and we wrote this uh, CIP, a Cardano Improvement Proposal, CIP 66, which basically defines a standard to do so. It defines a standard to verify NFT projects using decentralized identifiers. We have like all this, this text here explaining it. We have a few nice graphics on how to do it. We have a few uh, you know, metadata examples how to, how to actually do that. But the, the core idea is quite simple, right? So, Let's take a look at this picture. Basically, this on the left-hand side is an NFT collection. So we have all these different NFTs in there. We have NFT 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Oh, there's actually no 5. <laughs> okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6, 7, 8. And then we have this DIT, which is a decentralized identifier document. So this is actually the digital identity. And then we have all these social accounts on the right-hand side. So the idea is we connect all the social accounts of Paris Hilton to this DIT and store them in there, verify them in there, and then we connect this DIT to the collection on the Cardano blockchain. That's how it goes in theory. 
And um, to do to to demonstrate that a little bit in in, in um, what do you call it in practice, we actually build a tool in EndMaker Studio to make that very easy for people to to use. So in EndMaker Studio, what you can do right now is you can click on on this button, create edit collection token. You can click on this, and then you can say, okay, first of all, you can set the royalties here. That's that's what's already what already has been happening in the past, right? Nothing new. But then there's this new tab at the at the top, and there you can click and create your identity token. And to create the identity token, you are basically redirected to an external provider from IMX. So if I click on this website right now, I get redirected to this website from IMX. And here I can create my NFT identity. So what this means is essentially I can go to this website, I can see all these accounts. I already connected my Endmaker account, but I could also go ahead and maybe connect an, a, a completely different account. Like for example, let's say so let's say my LinkedIn account. Oops. Sorry for that. Um, so if I go to this, I, I'm asked to log into my LinkedIn account. And then if I log in, I basically do like this little sign in with LinkedIn button, authenticate this, this with LinkedIn. And then I connect my LinkedIn directly to this IMX website. And this is all, all done basically uh, you know, on, on the website itself and it's not stored by IMX or anything like that. But instead what IMX does is they create this did. They create the decentralized identifier. So they basically create a large document, large file, which they store on chain, uh, not on chain, on IPFS, sorry, and then they sent this file over to back to NMaker Studio. So if I were to click on create here, it basically redirects me to NMaker Studio. Here you can see NMaker Studio is already waiting for confirmation. I'm not going to do this right now, but in theory, uh, you know, this would take a few minutes, then it would uh, change to something green, and then it would say, okay, this identity is now connected to NMaker Studio, and you can now click on mint token. And if you click on mint token, it basically stores it on the chain. And that's it all takes less than five minutes. And that's how everyone can easily connect their identity with, um, with the NFT collection. So that's quite cool in my, in my opinion, at least. So what's, what's the benefit, the practical benefit of, of doing that, right? So the idea would be that once you've done this, you can actually go to a place like JPEG store and you could say, okay, let's take a look at the space buds. We see, okay, we have these different, uh, social buttons, so we have the Twitter account of the, the space buds, right? And we have the Discord account and we have the website. And the creator of the space buds, Alessandro, could have gone ahead and could have said, okay, I want to actually verify that my Twitter account is actually connected with this with this collection. So he could have he could create this did verify that his Twitter account is connected by actually logging into his Twitter account and creating this digital identity using his Twitter account. And then this little button here could have a, I don't know, green check mark or something like that. And then I, as a customer, could go ahead and say, okay, I see he has connected his Twitter account, his Facebook account, his, his, his Instagram account, and then I click on it. And then I can say, okay, do I trust this Twitter account? This looks legit, has a lot of followers, I know this, and so on. That's why I actually um, you know, believe that this collection is legit. And the same goes for Paris Hilton, right? Um, the same goes for everyone. And this could also be extended not only for social accounts, but it could be extended for things like KYC or KYB. So you could have Know Your Business in there, which becomes very interesting once we talk about real world use cases, where it's not only about you know, some collectibles, but instead it's about like real businesses putting stuff on the blockchain, maybe insurances putting stuff on the blockchain, stuff like that. So it becomes extremely interesting. And the, the point of all of this is basically that we provide users with more data points to verify these collections themselves. And you can still have these little check marks that, we, that we're so used to from all the marketplaces, right? But in addition to that, we should be giving users more, um, not more ways to verify it themselves. And we should be you know, going more into the direction of of Web3 and actually say, okay, you know, you have to be able to, to do that yourself and not just trust the centralized point like, like Magic Eden's database or something like that. 
Um, so I'm very much pushing for this. I think there's no reason why any project shouldn't be launching with this. It's an open standard. It's quite easy to implement. Uh, in NMaker Studio can literally create this identity token in less than less than a few minutes. And um, and even if you don't want to use NMaker Studio, you could create the identity token in NMaker Studio or using the IMX website here, uh, nftidentity.imx.id, and just use it with any other minter. But in general, as a community, I think we have a very, very strong chance of, of, of cre uh, creating something very unique if we push for this decentralized verification method, because then we finally have something which is different from Cardano marketplaces or Cardano NFT collections to the Solana and Ethereum collections. You know, we always should aim for the next highest level. So um, I'm very much trying to, to make this a little bit uh, of a standard. And I would encourage everyone to just you know, take a look at the CIP, take a look at the tooling that we are providing and, uh, and just try it out. It's very easy to do. So why, why shouldn't you be doing this? And there will be more stuff coming out about this uh, very soon. So we want to make it even easier. We want to actually verify it ourselves on, on the whole NMaker pages, NMaker Pay, um, the NMaker store, and so on. So it's it's really interesting to watch. Also, we've seen here, uh, you know, even Charles is actually supporting this in some sort of way. And uh, of course, IMX is behind it, but also Atala Prism. We had a very nice SSI workshop today, together with Atala Prism here. That's Tony Rose from Atala Prism. That's uh, Josh from, from Book.io and so on, Charlie Free. And we're all going to use this and really try to make something unique about it. Um, so yeah, it's it's an interesting topic. I don't have much to add to this at this point, but I do believe that you should all take a look at this. And I do believe that uh, if you're trying to launch a new project, really think about, okay, do I want to do this or not? It's really like there's no work to be done. It's not not a lot of work that you have to do before launching your, your new collection. So um, thank you very much for joining and for listening today. I hope I explained it in a at least somewhat understandable manner. But yeah, as always, see you next time.